What's up, everybody? Welcome to Building Our Power. This is Gabby. And KT. And we're back with another episode. Thank you guys for checking out our last joint. Uh, we appreciate all the uh, likes and the views on that one. Uh, make sure you check it out. Also, if you would like to hit us up, you can hit us up at Building Our PWR. If you would like to donate to uh, the community fridge and propagandizing of our community you can do that link will be in the bio speaking of that as we get into this conversation uh we're gonna be talking about martin luther king in memphis the pimping of martin luther king by memphis tennessee and just the world you know what i'm saying um if you're listening to this when it came out it is martin luther king Day 2022 so, how does this tie into the community fridge? Okay, so, this week, uh, we decided we weren't going to do the community fridge. We were going to uh, take some of the money that has been donated to us. So, we took $400, uh, went to the bank, got it in cash, got it in 20s, and we were going to pass it out along with uh, some zines or some educational pamphlets. Uh, so we were going to do that today. There's one particular area over here by KT's house where everybody hangs out is the regulars. Like, they're always there. Like, literally, there's always people there. They're always there. It's most of the time, the same people, but it's always a group, a congregation of people. When I tell you the streets were empty, bare, and oh, at first I was attributing it to it snowed today. Um, but the snow cleared up by, like, like 12 o'clock. And even then, like, we've been, like, whenever we see people around majority of the time, my house and stuff, it, uh, like, even if it's snow, there's still people outside. You right. know, like, they, like, just because it's snow doesn't mean that, uh, you can no longer be homeless. <laughs> so, exactly. So. So, we literally, usually, we ain't gotta go, like, a couple yards and we see somebody that's either homeless or somebody just hanging out on the corner. Yeah. Nobody at all. We had to drive around Memphis to find homeless people. Which is very odd. Very Very weird. odd. So we were trying to figure out, like, why? why? Why in the world could we find no homeless people? Or why could we find nobody just walking the street? Oh, and let me say this. Majority of the homeless people that are around that area are black. Yes. There were homeless people... They were all white. I have never in my life in Memphis seen just pure, like, 99% of the homeless people were like white. Like, we, we never seen, I don't think, yeah, I don't think either one of us have ever seen that many white people, like, out on the street, period. So, we were driving around. We were in downtown. I was like, this is ridiculous. There's no way. What in the world is going on? I remember. What's tomorrow? Martin Luther King Day. This is one of the biggest days of the year for Memphis. Tourism. Um, for tourism. Yeah. Um, so we get people, you know, they have a, that big Grizzlies game. Um, the Civil Rights Museum, they usually do something. They usually have a lot of uh, bashes and parades. So my hypothesis is they cleaned up that city. And by cleaned up, I mean they arrested all them people. And those people are in jail tonight. Yeah. And so Gabby and I, if initially, Gabby was like, well, maybe they bust them, you know, to like a different part of town. I was like, that just doesn't make sense. Like Memphis doesn't care about their people out, out on the street that much. Like, no, not at all. And uh, the warming centers don't open up until 7 p.m. So there's no reason why there shouldn't be people out here. And Gabby said, well, you know what? I bet you. I bet you the police got them. Yeah. I was like, that's the only thing that makes sense. That's the only, to, when I tell, y'all, y'all don't understand. We like, gotta look up, like, after this weekend is over, we're gonna obviously look up, and we'll update you guys, but we need to look up and see how many people were actually jailed over the weekend, but yeah. we promise you that is definitely what happened. Those people are in jail right now, yeah. which, I mean, it's not good at all. No. no it is warm, hopefully. But, but COVID is rampant. And that's just messed up. Yeah. That's just messed up. Don't try to act brand new now. What y'all doing all this for? Because y'all going to get some new people driving around the city. Yeah. Anyway, so we couldn't even do that. So now we got this money, and we got to wait until hopefully by Tuesday people start coming back out. Anyway, so this is bringing us into this conversation about Memphis and Martin Luther King. For people that do not know, uh, Martin Luther King drew his last breath in Memphis, Tennessee, 
Uh, he was assassinated at the Lorraine Motel. We were shot, and then he later died at the hospital. On April 4th of 1968. Right. And so, for people that don't know, we have... The, the Lorraine Motel has been converted into the Civil Rights Museum, which we will get into later. And so, for Memphis... Martin Luther King being killed here is literally a tourist selling point. Yes. They will say Elvis was born here and died here, and Martin Luther King gave his last speech and died here. Like, that's the way they bring people here. Yes. The death of a person. And so we're going to go a little bit into the history of why Martin Luther King ended up in Memphis uh, on April in April and... Since then, has anything changed in Memphis? And we're going to get into the controversy of the Civil Rights Museum. So, KT. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to kind of start it off with, uh, in 1968, there was the Memphis Sanitation Strike. Uh, the strike was in response to Echo Cole and Robert Wa Walker, who actually died. Um, so, what essentially what happened is, is that these guys were out uh, doing their jobs, basically with a truck, a garbage truck, and it was raining outside, and the only way that they could shield themselves from the rain was to sit inside the garbage truck. If you know anything about garbage trucks, you know you should not sit inside of them because you will die. Uh, well, that's exactly what happened. These two guys, they died, and it's because the truck was malfunctioned. Uh, the sanitation workers previously had already told the company that it malfunctioned and that it broke. Uh, not just this truck, but multiple other ones. So not only did these two guys die, which started the strike, um, but sanitation workers, majority black sanitation workers, they would have to pick up garbage cans. And during that time, they didn't actually have, like, wheels on the garbage cans. So the garbage cans would be, like, really, really heavy, right? So, um, essentially, the guys would pick up the garbage can, they put it on top of their head, and when they put it on top of the head, sadly, there was holes in the garbage can, which meant that these people would have to get uh, maggots and trash all over their head while they were trying to do, do trash. So they were pissed. Like, people were just genuinely pissed because of the working conditions and because the company genuinely did not care about them. So prior to them starting the strike, they had actually started a union, uh, the sanitation workers themselves. But sadly, the mayor of Memphis, Henry Loeb, did not recognize the union as a legitimate union. So uh, we actually looked up Henry Loeb because we wanted to figure out, like, who was he, what was going on with him, and how come, why would he not uh, recognize that union for sanitation workers of Memphis? And I think Gabby has some of that information. All right, so Henry Lowe came from a family of exploiters of black people. I'm sure his family owned slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, they also owned uh, some major dry cleaning uh, and laundry services in Memphis where the black women that were the workers there were trying to advocate for more pay, and they never got that pay. Mm. Um, fast forward to now, they own tons of properties in Memphis. They own entire neighborhoods, um, most especially in Midtown. Those people are still making money off of that today. So let's let's get back to Henry Loeb. Henry Loeb said that um, he would not abandon his moral obligation to protect them from union officials because he told them, you know, they're just trying to steal your money. I, I want what's best for you. What was best for them? Uh, they didn't have any uniforms. They couldn't go to the restroom. Uh, they had no way to, to air their grievances about uh, low pay and all the other things that KT said. These were things that he thought were, were just normal and just fine. So uh, that was the mayor at the time. And so that's pretty much what was going on. It was a battle between the sanitation workers and the uh, city, and the city, pretty yeah. much. Uh, but as as it grew, as as the sanitation workers were starting to uh, mobilize 
and their strike was growing bigger, it started to get national attention, and a lot of civil rights leaders started to come in support and solidarity. One of them happened to be Martin Luther King, who came previously, I think he came in February or something? Yeah. At first. And he came, gave support, said he's going to be with them the whole way uh, as far as the strike goes. Um and I do want to mention, like, uh, whenever he did come, they did have a strike. Like, the very first time that he came, there was a strike that happened. And um, there was a young boy that ended up dying in that. His name was, uh, what, Larry Payne, I believe was his name. And he was 16 years old. And uh, basically what happened is that the police got violent. And once the police got violent, they shot and killed the poor kid. So, um, yeah, MLK, he was like, okay, well, I got I to gotta go do something up in, D- in D.C. and I'm going to come back, right? So before we get to the, about the end part about Martin Luther King dying, something I really wanted to talk about, too, was I know y'all have seen the I Am A Man signs. You've seen mm-hmm. photographs from these sanitation strikes. Um, most famously, I Am A Man. And something I was thinking about is... This sentiment was used for a specific reason. What do you mean? These sanitation workers were fighting for better working conditions, better wages for a union. Yeah. They weren't just saying, I am a man, to say that I am a human. Mm -mm. They were saying, I am a man. I deserve a quality work, a work uh, environment, and I deserve certain rights. I'm human. I'm not an animal. That, but what I'm saying is it was specific to the working condition, work, economics, the job, occupation. It wasn't some type of... um, theoretical, I'm black, I am a human, uh, equality. I mean, it, it was, but it wasn't like how it is now. Y'all know how it's being used now. They're now, every, every time you see any type of imagery about black history, I'm a man. The liberals use it, the conservatives use it, uh, you see it on a t-shirt, but nobody is grounding it into what was that about. Like, people will have that on mm-hmm. their businesses. They will paint that sign on their businesses, and their, their workers aren't allowed to unionize. Literally. Their workers are getting paid minimum wage. They have no sick time. The workers are in terrible working conditions. Why do you have this sign painted on your establishment? Why, Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee... Is this imagery all over the city? It literally is. But your black workers are still working in terrible working conditions in these warehouses. Folks dropping dead. You got to walk over the people and continue working. But I am a man. Because I am a man now does not mean anything. I'm a man just means I'm a man. Yay. Now, Now I'm thinking what you just said. Down Main Street, where the sanitation strike actually was here in Memphis, they have this huge sign that has been uh, painted as if it was, quote-unquote, graffiti. It's not graffiti. It's a mural, okay? And we've talked about murals before, about gentrification and how murals work. But that huge sign says, I am a man. They have painted black people on there with signs that say, I am a man, down the actual street that it happened at. So they've, they've essentially purified it. They've made it into some kind of liberal co-opt of, uh, uh, like, what do you call it, pacified them. Instead of people who were angry about what was going on, they have pacified it. Those people back then, don't, let it, don't, don't get it twisted. We know how this stuff goes. Unions were not like back then. Anti-communism was rampant. Yeah. The mayor before, E.H. Crump, called the union some nigga shit, pretty much. Mm. And that was the sentiment. The local newspapers hated the sanitation workers and hated what they were doing. The, 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 they were in favor of the mayor and his union busting ass. Yep. This was a radical 
thing to do. It wasn't that many white folks holding hands with this thing. There wasn't now, any white folks be, at all. Right, because now we're talking about the money. This We ain't just talking about holding hands kumbaya. Now we're talking about something that's going to challenge you, that's going to challenge your pockets, that's going to challenge your power. So... What, whatever it is now, obviously, is not where, where, what it was back then. I was telling KT, these, these sanitation workers met with President Obama, yeah. the guy who stopped the NBA strike before it even happened. These people have met with, I'm, per, I'm sure they met with every president since the 1960s. They've got their own mural. They've got their own statue, which is great. Statues. Like, if you go to the Civil Rights Museum... There are actual statues of the actual people who were in the sanitation strike. Right. But here's the thing. Nothing wrong with that. They should be commended because they did something that was unheard of in Memphis, Tennessee. Want no black yes. women. But the, it's about the story that's being told. Yeah. Why were the people striking? They don't tell you that part. They just say, and look, I was down here and he died here. There you go. They don't focus on that Jungian shit. They don't focus mm -hmm. on... On the strikers. They on don't, the strikers. Yeah, they don't focus on the strikers at all. The only significance to them is that that's why Martin Luther King came here and that's why he that's died. That's it. That that's all it. we going to say. Yeah. And it was just about some type of theoretical, my dignity as a black person. No, this was about economics. Yeah. This was about challenging these corporate bosses. But that story is not what's going to be told to us because that's going to make us look and be like, wait, ain't nothing changed. And, okay, I'm going to let KT go to the, the rest of the part about Martin Luther King coming back because, uh, as you can see, ain't nothing changed. So. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So, basically, after um, after he came and he left and he came back in April 3rd, yeah, he did his famous um, mountaintop. mountaintop speech. Uh, and, essentially, there was another strike that happened and uh, everybody was really happy. They were like, okay, you know, MLK is finally here. He said he's going to stay here with us throughout this entire thing. I can't wait till we can actually get our rights, right? And so uh, even if you go back and you listen to um, the people who were actually at the strike, they were ecstatic. They were like, we're going to get some change. On April 4th, MLK gets shot on his way to a meeting. He gets shot at the Lorraine Motel. So, uh, yeah, he, he's dead, and, uh, like, the day previously, he got everybody riled up, right? Everybody was pissed, and now, even more so, they're even more pissed. So, of course, here come some more strikes. People start literally burning buildings down, which I don't blame them. I literally would have been burning buildings down, too. Uh, and the Memphis government, the city of Memphis, like, as wonderful and kind and perfect as they are, brought the National Guardian with huge tanks. And there was a, uh, what do you call it? Like whenever you can't go out after a certain time, a curfew. There was a curfew. And so, yeah, the Memphis government at that point, Gabby, what did they do after, after all that happened? After they killed the leader of the movement at that point. What happened? So on April 8th, uh, Coretta Scott King, that was like, Four days after Martin Luther King died, she uh, did a little a silent, yeah. a silent march, and uh, it was about forty two thousand people there. Jesus. Um, so the UAW, which is the Union of uh, whatever, whatever of America, <laughs> he he wrote a check to fifty thousand dollars to the sanitation workers, um, and the, the strike ended on April sixteenth with the settlement that included union recognition and wages increase, increases. That's it. Although additional strikes had to be threatened to force the city of Memphis to honor its agreements. The period was a turning point for black activism and union activity in Memphis. So even after all that, even after Loeb saying, okay, okay, they still we'll you, had to be forced, their hands still had to be forced to um, do some of the concessions. But even now, okay, now we're here. Right. Now it's uh, 2022. We tell y'all the stories of Memphis all the time. 
there are no big unions in Memphis. That uh, Kellogg's Union was probably the biggest one that we got besides the police. Yeah. Um, there's no teacher union. There's no nothing like that. And it's actually, isn't it against the law to have, like, a, a union anyway? Like, they're not unions that they have. It's, a it's right, an association. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a right-to-work state, so the union thing is kind of iffy and tricky. But, yeah, the, as far as workers' rights, we tell y'all every time, there's nothing that has really changed at all. Mm-hmm. But Memphis has used this time of unrest, has used this tragedy of Martin Luther King being murdered as a way to build money for the city and not for the residents. No. For the rich, for the middle class, for the working class. Because what do we have now? Now we have the National Civil Rights Museum. Lorraine Motel was converted into the National Civil Rights Museum and it was debuted in 1991. At that time, though, there were still people living in the the, the motel. Like, that was what? still a place of residence for people. And uh, one of the last people to be kicked out, literally forced out, all her stuff thrown on the ground, was Jacqueline Smith. She had lived there since 1973 Jeez. and was working as a housekeeper. The motel was closed in 1988, and Smith was evicted. The neighborhood at the time around the motel was a lower-income, predominantly black area. Absolutely. When you go there now, that area, those apartments, $2,000, $3,000 a month. If, If it's that cheap, because let me tell you, that whole area has been gentrified. It has been gentrified. The The closest black people who are lower income or the closest lower income people that you're going to get in that area are literally homeless people. You're not going to see anybody but white, rich yuppies, okay? It is gentrified. Yes, so if, actually, I don't recommend anybody go to the, like, inside the Civil Rights Museum. I don't personally. It costs too much anyway. Um, but I mean, if you want to go outside and just look, I mean, you can do that. But if you've ever been to the Civil Rights Museum, you've seen this lady. Yeah. She has been there since the 90s. She has a tent, she has signs, she has paperwork, and she's been protesting the Civil Rights Museum ever since she is still there. Ever since she got kicked out. And so what she has been arguing this whole time was... First of all, this is a waste of money. Second of all, why are we idealizing and and celebrating the death of yes. Martin Luther King? It's focusing too much on his death and what happened in the past. It's not really focusing on what can be done now. And she's right. And it was a gentrification tour 100%. This is one of the biggest attractions in Memphis, Tennessee. And... I hope she's not- out there tomorrow. Like, um, we're recording this on Sunday, but I really hope she's out there tomorrow when all them uh, rich white people are going over there or all those tourists are over there. I really hope she's out there. I mean, she's always there. She's exactly. always there. She even, um, I think that was in the early 90s, she got Jimmy Carter to not go inside, and he promised her that he would never go inside, but eventually he did a couple wow. years later. Um, So she just thought that, and she was right that, I mean, what are you doing here? And even Coretta Scott King shared her view that focusing on King's violent death creates a narrative that precludes his vision and message of peace. So let me ask you this. If we are talking about things that the civil rights movement fought for, okay, we know that was problematic, most of it. A lot of it was was bourgeois uh, aspirations. But if we're just focusing on the end of Martin Luther King's death, this facility should be a haven for black workers rights if we are carrying in the legacy of king before the man died he was trying to organize the working black people of america and nobody in memphis is doing that not at all they are using this man to sell every nonprofit to sell, every t shirt to sell uh, everything. What was that thing you, you sent me in Memphis? They have 
uh, care like MLK? Yeah, they have, oh my they have God. something tomorrow that's a vaccine uh, initiative, which ain't nothing wrong with that, um, but it's called Care Like King, MLK Health and Wellness Badge. What oh does Martin my. Luther King have to do with a, a vaccine? Ugh. But but that's that. But it's not even a Memphis thing. We know everywhere we go, everybody has used Martin Luther King as a way to make a quick dollar, and it's sick because that's literally what that man was fighting at the end of the day. Literally, capitalism and the exploitation of black people. And to this day, that man has been exploited to no end. From the corners of the alt right to the most liberal to the most uh, anarchist. All them people, everybody has been guilty of of commodifying that man to the point where he isn't even a human no more. And this is what we talk about. You and I have talked about this. But this is what we say when we say, like, people who even whenever George Floyd died and they were selling T-shirts and things like that. Like, black people's death is literally commodified to make a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Think about this. There's no reason that the Lorraine Motel should cost. That the Civil Rights Museum no, should cost. No, there's no reason. In my opinion. I mean, you're getting state funding, whatever. It's a nonprofit. There's no reason no, this thing should cost. If you're getting state funding, you should it should not cost. It should be free. And and there's been controversy as well because mm, no surprise, majority of the board there is white. Mm-hmm. And are rich corporate. Work for corporations. Mm-hmm. What good can they contribute to this? If this is what we're about, if if we're about making the lives of black people better, what good is that? But no, they even had somebody come from the Civil Rights Museum and say that this is not a place of activism. This is a historical place. This is a place for us to remember what happened, and that's it. Y'all wanting it to be more than what it is, that's y'all fault if y'all want it to be something more than this. Because it was. Like, that's what they don't understand is that... Like, things like this, like like we said, like, they're literally taking him, okay, he died, okay. And it's like, they were like, okay, well, here you go, black people, enjoy. Like, it wasn't, it's not really something where, you, like, you can actually go up to it and be like, okay, well, this is fucked up. Because workers were literally striking, and he was trying to help poor people, or he was trying to strike with them, and he died trying to do that. No, they're like, okay, well, he died, enjoy. All right, so I've been to the Civil Rights Museum. Uh, actually, a fun fact, my dad was one of the, the choir singers in, in the opening. Oh, but, my God. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you right now. Every living president has been to the Civil Rights Museum. That's how you know. That's all you need to know. And they love it. That's all you need to know. They ain't love nothing it. challenging. Ain't nothing challenging. Oprah goes there. Every, every diplomat, they have diplomats from all over the world. Somebody from South Korea was over there. Like, everybody loves the Civil Rights Museum. They have tears in their eyes. Hillary Clinton and was there. That's how you know it is some BS. And they couldn't even, if they wanted to, focus on, yeah, Martin was fighting for economic rights. These workers, Bernard Rustin, everybody was fighting for black people to earn more money, yada, yada, yada. Because if you go outside, not on this street. You go two two blocks down, you're going to be like, what the hell? Is this is this the 21st century? Yep. Mm-hmm. And poor people everywhere. Poor people everywhere living in terrible living conditions. Literally falling and, apart houses. And people, just plenty of people with no homes. And, and Gabby and I, like, we talked about this a lot, but if... You know, like, whenever you look at those images that the United States shows to us, the propaganda, that what Africa apparently looks like, if people saw, like, the same images that are in, like, our major cities, they would be appalled. They would be absolutely appalled. We would have more Christians everywhere. They would try to do evangelicalism over here. They are. They already are, exactly. But I'm saying, like, it would be even worse. Because the United States government does not care about its people. The local government does not care about its people. If you're not working, we said this last episode, if you're not working, you might as well be dead to them. Yeah. So. And that's it. So, ultimately, we just wanted to highlight because, again, let's bring it back to what we said about the homeless. To celebrate Martin Luther King <laughs> in his day, 
of fighting for the, the black working class. We finna round up all the homeless people and put them in the jail. Yep. So that y'all uh, middle class people can have a wonderful, pleasant experience celebrating Martin Luther King. Yep. And I, I find it sick. I find it horrible. I find it terrible to the legacy of Martin King. And it's it's really sad. You just don't want to think about it too much. Um, something else before we go that is interesting about Martin Luther King Day um, that I was listening to another uh, woman and she was talking about. Martin Luther King Day is like the only federal holiday uh, where you're expected to do something. Like, you're expected to volunteer. And usually it's just directed to the black people. Uh, it's a day of service. They I've say, never heard that. Yeah, because you're white. It's not, they, what they say, it's not a day off, it's a day on. So they want you to go do something in the community, clean up something, paint a school, something like that. <laughs> what? And um, that's BS, obviously, and it's racist as hell. Literally. Because we don't do that for any other any other holiday and then is that really what Mark, like i don't know what what do these people think martin Luther king who do they think he is is he like a jesus figure is he like a liberal god is a, he a buddha or something like is he a mickey mouse that, character? I, I mean that's kind of how they framed it at this point like i feel like like i said he's been him his legacy how things uh, have been portrayed as far as, like, the civil rights movement and stuff like that, how it's been sanitized. Like, literally, they have pacified that so much to the point where it's like, okay, well, that's it. Like, you guys had your civil rights movement. That's the end of time. Enjoy your capitalist buying uh, together. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's like they don't really care as long as we're out here buying stuff and as long as we're working in these factories, we're working at these places – you, that's it. Like, good luck. Good that's luck, horrible. America. You're you're now now you're integrated and integration. The only thing that's really changed is you both get to buy things together and uh, yeah, enjoy your your American life, your American dream. Enjoy it. That's it. Like America is literally so shit. And I wish there was a way that we could like convey that better. But all the information that we read often, it just confirms every single time. That they do not care about us. They don't care about poor people. They don't care about black people. They do not care about uh, queer people. They don't care about poor queer black people. America is so shit. That that is that is that is. Why do we say that every episode? Because after. it's true. And so back to this thing, we want to celebrate Martin Luther King for who we was as a man, an imperfect man. All of us are imperfect. He had very bad ideas. He had very great ideas. But I ultimately, I think his heart was in the right place um, for majority of it. Um, but for us, we have to let people know the truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly about mm -hmm. Martin Luther King. Because right now, I don't even know what majority of people even think about this man. All I know is they know he had a dream about something. Folks, folks don't even know what the dream was about. So, yeah, if you can, tomorrow, this week, just whenever, you know, just throw in some nuggets. Throw in some videos about Martin Luther King saying stuff folks don't know about. I'm talking about reparations. I'm talking about workers' rights. I'm talking about anti-imperialism, stuff like that, to celebrate him. Because what, what America has done to him is, 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 is horrible, and it's 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 worse than spitting on his grave. You ask me, it's worse than how they do Martin Luther, uh, Malcolm X. Because at least with Malcolm X, there's a collective disdain of him for majority of America. Ain't no faking it. Mm -hmm. But with Martin Luther King, it's a disdain. But we gonna prop you up like you something great. But we gonna we gonna literally use your body, use your voice, use your words as a whip to whip these black people mm. and to get them to do what we want them to do and use it as a capitalist tool, a, a propaganda, propagandized tool. So, yeah, it, it's just And, I bad. mean, even when Martin was alive, he was still, he was being used by yeah. capitalists. Yeah. Like, we talked about that in a previous episode about how he was literally used by the CIA in order to do things through the NAACP. So it's like, like... 
I just feel, I feel it's exhausting because not only does the United States government do Martin Luther King that way, but they have literally done anybody, anybody who's they black can. and who died. You notice that, like, not white people. I don't, you don't see that happen to white people except, like, maybe musicians. Like Elvis, for instance, here in Memphis. But, but, but it's but not, not the, the same. Not the glorified not, and no. the martyrdom. No. That's the difference. Yeah. It's the martyrdom. Yeah. They died for this. They died for that. Is it Jesus? That's kind of how it is. It's like, yeah. It's, but it's, it's a way to make them. I mean, but it's it's fake. You know what it reminds me of? We're going on a whole tangent. It's going to be a long episode, guys. <laughs> We're going on tangent. It reminds me of, okay, if you ate under 18, cut it off. Uh, it reminds me of uh, those kink people. Like yeah. those, those black supremacy white kink people Ugh. who their kink is uplifting black people like ooh black is god black, this black woman is god ooh i need a black the black black uh, race is superior like they get off on that Ugh. but i think it's getting off on degrading yourself to uplift black people like it's it's it's, it's weird white people y'all are weird yeah, i, I, I can't ever put a pin down on what y'all really got going on in y'all head i keep telling you like the same thing how they did uh how they do rosa parks like yeah. literally like there's a specific set of black people that they do that to martin luther king rosa parks uh who else all of uh, Harriet Tubman. Uh, Harriet Tubman, exactly. My so it just all get on the coin. It, we were in a bookstore and we saw a whole book that was like that. That was like these are the heroes of our of our world, and it was just a whole bunch of black people who literally died trying to do something in this fucked up, shitty ass capitalist system. And we were like, this is so offensive. But I think, like you said, yes, you're absolutely correct. It's a way. For white people to feel better about themselves. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's how it is. It's because, okay, let me sanitize this as much as possible so that I don't have to recognize my own whiteness. I don't have to recognize the the power that my whiteness has in this system. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a dog. It's like, oh, good boy. Good boy. Yeah. You did good for you. Well, that's real nice. But I ain't finna do nothing. I ain't finna figure out why you over here doing this stuff. Eh, I'm just gonna give you a pat on the head. Well, I wouldn't say it's like a dog, but I would say it's more or less like it, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just to make white people feel more comfortable, which we him. don't, we do not do on this show. We don't. If you white and you comfortable, you might want to get off. Um, but ultimately, <laughs> okay, there's one other point. We, this is just going to be one of the episodes. I want to go back to what you said because I had an epiphany. It wasn't an epiphany. We know it, but it, it was like, damn. Okay, what? We talked about this integration what they want us to celebrate as far as oh yeah progress yeah, yeah. yeah progress civil rights progress is that yes you negro you can go into the store and spend money too yeah, and we did we did talk about. about this previously like not on the podcast but we talked about how like what, what actually has changed since integration? Like, what is, like, physically happening? We said, okay, black people get to work in the same jobs as white people. But, check this out, uh, black people make less money. So, did that really change? No. Okay, uh, black people get to ride on the highways, uh, in buses with white people. But, most of the time, it's not like these buses that black people are on are even, like, gonna help them get anywhere because the buses in the cities are fucked up. And the white people don't even ride white the buses White people don't no even ride the buses anymore. Exactly. What You can go to schools with each other, okay? But check this out. White people moved out of the fucking city just so that they could go to the suburbs and create their own fucking schools. And now the black it's schools like, ain't got no funding, but that was the whole reason for integration to get the funding. And and there's actually been a, a trend of Memphis. What Memphis has yeah, been doing, of, like, of even, like, like... 10 years ago, they did the same thing, tried to integrate with the white school. The white school turned and annexed themselves and, and created a whole nother school. Created a whole nother town. A whole nother town, a whole nother school, just so that they would not have to go to school with black people. And so that's what we have to focus on. What has physically changed? Nothing. Nothing We're has in the changed same except time. for you get to spend your money. You can that's spend it. your money. Aren't you happy? You're getting paid 
crumbs, but you can spend. You can buy products. But what even then, doing? check this out. Something I just thought about. There is a tax. There's a black tax for black hair products and things that are way more expensive than white hair care products. Yeah. Well, I was talking about just you can spend your money at a, at the restaurant. You can go to the same restaurant with the white person, spend your money. You can go to the movies, spend your money. And yeah, it's just ultimately nothing. If that was the goal. That's why we're nowhere. That's why we're nowhere. So, and that's why we say capitalists literally are the whole reason for integration to begin with. And we said that on a previous episode that you guys need to go back and listen to because we literally explained why capitalists ended sec or integration or ended segregation. And and it was just for that. So, yeah, guys, we we kind of went off, but <laughs> that was our main point. Our main point was just challenging these narratives of Martin Luther King, remembering what he stood for. That man was one of the most hated Americans alive by the time he died. That man was labeled a communist, a socialist. That man was assassinated for a reason. Let's remember those things, and let's remember those principles, and let that fuel us as we continue to organize and educate the people. So, uh, yeah, guys, we will definitely get to keep y'all updated on the whole situation with all the homeless people in Memphis and where they at uh, by next episode. Um, but, again, if you would like to donate to what we're trying to do with the propagandizing and the community fridge and the giving away of money, to people you can do that link will be in the bio if you'd like to hit us up you can hit us up at building our pwr hit kt up you can do that at kt underscore does art and hit me up at gab beats music all right this has been gabby and kt and this has been building our power we're out